second question is to ask you to talk a little bit about uh, mycorrhizal fungi and uh, why that's why understanding um, that I guess community or you know um, that that's the term people uh, use but there's a that living thing that exists in the soil why it's important from the gardener's point of view to getting really good results with uh, whatever you're trying to grow in the ground. Well, yeah, mycorrhizal fungi, it, if we look at the root of the word, uh, you know, myco is fungi and rhiza is roots. So really they're root fungi, they're, they're, they're fungi and fungi have thread-like hyphae. Uh, these ones actually, uh, inf they infect the roots, but it's a symbiotic infection. So okay. mycorrhizal fungi, uh, root fungi is you've got the uh, the fungi with their thread like hyphae that infect the roots uh, they're getting sugars from the plant uh, in return they've got they're greatly enlarging the root system so right. they're providing nutrients to the plant uh, phosphorus is often the biggest one but uh, also nitrogen uh, some of the micronutrients uh, possibly water but I think more often, you know, the, those those threads will will shut down in, in dry conditions quicker than the roots will. But uh, certainly, they they do benefit the plants, uh, and those structures take time to develop. Uh, right. And that's that's why you know, if you're growing an orchard or trees, they're hugely important because that that really multiplies the size of the uh, the root system. In an annual crop. Uh, it will be less, uh, I won't say it's less important, but it's gonna take a little bit longer to get established. And if you've worked the ground, if you've you know tilled up the ground, you've broken up all those hyphae that are there, they have to really get started from, from scratch. Uh, so uh, that's part of why no-till gardening or no-till farming works is those, those mycorrhizal fungi, those networks are already established, they just have to infect the, uh, the rootlets as they emerge. Yeah, so like, plants are getting the benefit right from the start. I often wonder, like, you know, I mean, Nova Scotia gets, I, I live in Nova Scotia, for those that are new, and we, we do get rain. We don't get the kind of rain that the, the UK gets, but we do get a lot of rain. It's a rainy place, <laughs> especially where I live. I'm relatively close to the coast. It's a 10-minute drive, 10-minute drive south. Um, and there's days I can literally smell the, the sea, the ocean. Right. Um, but... Um, during the summer, um, from about, basically once my plants have uh, roots, you know, once the plants are about this high, four inches high, I really don't water them all summer long. Like I, st yeah. I, st I stop water, I, I have a mulch on my garden, maybe two or three inches of whatever, could be uh, hay or grass or leaves, or basically whatever I can get my hands on without spending any money. Um, so I always have that soil covered with something to sort of mimic the situation that would be in a, on a forest floor or on a, on a natural field, on like a, um, you know, prairie, right? Um, right. No one waters a prairie. No one waters a forest. Nothing, you know, and it doesn't need to be watered. Um, so, but I can't prove for sure that it's the case that <laughs> it's all the, this giant, like you got the roots going down this far and then you've got this huge thing that's sort of in and out and tied into it and connected and it's gathering, um, you know, uh, I can't prove that it's, it's getting water to that, to those plants. Um, but I do know that people that garden where I am, they can't go all summer without water in their garden and I can't, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, it's anecdotal. It's completely out of it's, Yeah, yeah. And, and you've got two things going on there because you've got or two or three things going on there. Uh, you've got the mycorrhizae because you're not disturbing the soil. But that's going to help. You've got the mulch on the surface, which is going to stop or slow down evaporation from the surface. Exactly. So you're retaining the, the moisture that's there. You know, that, that moisture that has fallen in the, uh, in the spring, more of that's going to be staying in the soil than if somebody had, had a bare soil. And when you leave the soil undisturbed, you don't dry it out. Yes. So somebody who spades their garden, you know, every time you uh, disturb the garden, you probably lose the equivalent of an inch of, of moisture. Right. So you need to have an inch of rain to replace that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, it's a little, you know, you are retaining moisture. You're in a, a climate that uh, is yes. generally well watered, Yes. which helps. Uh, it's a bit of a fallacy to say, well, you know, for the forest or the prairie don't suffer from drought. 
uh, they're adapted. They just shut down if the dry conditions oh, start growing again when you get rain. It's a, it's a little different true. than a garden where. That's true. Yeah, the trees you, will you just want, give up. The trees will give up their leaves. Uh, yeah. If things are upon, you know, needles or whatever. That that is true. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably more accurate to say you're gaining three or four weeks that you don't have to water. And if you had a really long dry spell, you would. But oh, where yeah. you always get rain anyway. That's right. Yeah, and there are like. There are times when I think like, geez. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting close. It's how getting far, close. How far do I want to take this experiment? You know, because I do want yeah. to get amazing pumpkins and zucchini at the end of the season. Right. All right. This next question actually speaks to something we touched on earlier. Uh, this is from Joy, uh, Jody Rendell asks, uh, does adding store-bought mycorrhizal fungi benefit plants? We actually talked about this uh, before the before the interview. Yeah, well, I can, I can answer a little bit more directly and say, if you, unless you've got some reason that the mycorrhizae in the soil have been totally destroyed, adding a store-bought concoction is not going to make any difference at all. What, uh, what, what might so, bring, why, why would that be the case? Why would the whole uh, fungi sort of system be destroyed? Uh, yeah, the thing, places where we've seen fungi or mycorrhizae destroyed would be uh, Inundation, like after the, the floods in the Mississippi in the, uh, the 90s, you know, there were soils that it took a while before they came back to full productivity because they'd lain underwater for two months and uh -huh. that was enough to kill the mycorrhizae. That's, That's a pretty tough. extreme situation. Right. Uh, yeah, if you've got, if you've got subsoil, you know, some of that builder's loam that has absolutely nothing. But then the trouble is if you've got that builder's loam, just adding mycorrhizae is not going to make any difference because you haven't got a good environment for them to grow. Right, right. And uh, yeah, so I, I like to quote Kevin Costner. Uh, <laughs> if you build it, they will come. Exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah. Create the conditions yeah. that the, uh, the soil organism, the beneficials, Create a situation where the beneficial uh, soil organisms, they'll just want to be there and they'll proliferate. All and they'll, the yeah, and generally there is enough inoculum there that you don't need to add more. Right. So you're, you're saying it's, it's only in very extreme cases that someone would want to go on Amazon and buy some magic uh, fungi inoculants to... I see a lot of guys on YouTube sprinkling this around as pixie dust. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, and if you're buying it on Amazon and it... It sat in a warehouse over the weekend at, uh, you know, 35 degrees Celsius. You're, you are putting magic dust on because whatever was alive is no longer alive. The only thing that's alive is the magic. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> magic in your head. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, unless, unless the, uh, the soil where you're trying to get your garden started has, uh, has gone through some sort of ecological disaster. Um, yeah, it's probably not going to do any good very unlikely that you need to buy that stuff. Um, just, just, just keep it covered, keep a mulch on it, you know, get the organic material in there, it should uh, take care of itself. All right, so next question uh, is from um, Howard Vespers. And he asks, uh, he says, I was planning on digging up a few buckets of soil from around the base of a few very large old trees back in the forest of my family's farm this year and using it as an inoculant. I'm guessing this is a uh, mycorrhizal fungi uh, type uh, theme question again. Um, by sprinkling it around for three new garden beds uh, comprised mainly of wood chips and old hay that I will be planting, uh, you know, making it a potato garden in the 2021 season. Uh, they will be allowed to lay fallow and rot all this year. Is this a good way of increasing the good bacterial or fungal growth in my soil? So I guess he's got some soil and uh, he's, he's, un, he's uh, not completely confident in that soil he has because it's basically like wood chips and hay and a lot of organic material. And he's, he wants to throw some soil from the base of a, an old tree on top of that, to sort of maybe pick it up or give it a, a, a sort of a micro, uh, microorganism shot sort of thing and let it sit like that all summer long and then plant it next year. What, what do you think about that? Okay, so he, what he's doing is really trying to do a homemade inoculant. Right. Uh, it's got a better chance of actually having some, some live mycorrhizae to be able to get to the garden than uh, what you buy at the store. Is it going to make any difference? He's adding a bit more organic matter with, with that stuff. Uh, 
because actually if he's going to get mycorrhiza, uh, it wouldn't be near the trunk. It would be out where the roots are active. Right. Around the drip line. Right. Uh, so near the trunk, he's probably getting, you know, it's more of the organic matter that he's, he's bringing back to the garden. Right. Uh, I don't think I would do it, but it's, it's something that uh, it's not going to hurt anything to do that. Right. As long as he doesn't bring back a bunch of quackgrass rhizomes when he does it. Right. Well, and I'm guessing like if he's got gardens that are made beds, I guess you just fill them up with wood chips and old hay. There's probably a reasonably good deal of different kinds of fungi in there already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, if anything, maybe that might need some, some nitrogen to, to, to sort of heat that up a bit. Uh, I'd say if you're out in the garden and you got to use the bathroom, uh, that'd be the place to do it uh, <laughs> for this summer. And uh, <laughs> the magic will probably take care of itself. <laughs>